When I was in school learning about the ancient gods worshipped by the Greeks, Romans, Vikings, or the Egyptians, I always wondered how just one new religion could entirely flip a society on its head in only a matter of generations, and I wondered if the old gods were truly dead to this world for good. Polytheists, occultists, pagans, heathens, when spreading throughout Europe and the world, a few centuries after the crucifixion of Christ, Christians had a few names for this loose affiliation of people who still held tradition to their ancestral religions, and seemingly the last practitioner of these ancient beliefs died long ago. Or did they? It would come as a surprise to many, as it did to me, that there is a growing segment of people, and definitely not an insignificant amount, who are unironically reverting back to the old religions of their ancestors from thousands of years ago. But why is this the case? There are many reasons for this massive and global paganistic or occultist revival, but who exactly is a pagan? What do they believe in? Where do they live? Keep in mind this video is obviously not trying to promote any religious belief, merely an analysis of a growing and fascinating demographic trend that is impacting millions worldwide. According to some estimates, European neo-paganism is the fastest growing religion in the United Kingdom, France, Portugal, Denmark, and, you guessed it, the United States of America. But when did this trend really start to take off? Well, the term pagan is an umbrella term that describes a wide variety of beliefs and traditions, although when discussing such subjects, a more accurate term would be occultist, although many often use these interchangeably, but there are major differences. Occultism includes groups like Druids, Wiccans, Satanists, as well as European neo-pagans such as followers of the Old Norse religion who have been branded as Odinists by some, or the Old German followers known as Asatruans or simply Heathens, slash Slavic followers known as Rodnovers, Romanians known as Zalmoxians, or Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian followers known as Taraists, Dievturai, and Romuvans respectively. And although among European neo-pagans the designations are largely linked to ethnic or ancestral heritage, there is significant blending of these paganistic beliefs and practices, with many identifying as simply generally pagan or occultist, not subscribing to any specific god or deity, and the number of universally accepted morals, values, or mythology of this group are few to none. Now, contrary to what you may be thinking, the Wiccans of today actually have virtually nothing to do with the so-called witches of the 17th century Salem witch trials, wherein around two dozen people were accused of witchcraft or occultism and sentenced to death, although this has largely been exaggerated with modern cinema and educational curriculum. The modern religion of Wicca was actually started in the 20th century in England, but the reason they are classified as paganistic religious believers is because they worship the old gods of Stone Age Europeans, worshipping a single or multiple deities who are male and or female, and despite earning the reputation of devil worshippers, spinsters, and tricksters, they actually have very little to do with the so-called witches of early America. And although heavily mythologized and romanticized in American culture, the Norse, Roman, or Greek gods are more than just fiction to many neo-pagans, although many do not literally believe in all the mythological stories passed down from their ancestors. One thing that nearly all modern occultists have in common today is their acknowledgement of the importance of being in tune with both their ancestors and oftentimes the very earth itself, and for this reason they may find themselves having commonalities with traditional animistic beliefs from many people groups around the world, and in fact many similarities have been drawn to Hinduism or Zoroastrianism by modern academics. However, despite their claims of worshipping the old gods of their ancestors, pagan groups today are considered to be a New Age religion, as the vast majority of groups in Europe lost their pagan faith many, many generations ago, and it has only been recently that modern practitioners have revived the movement. European neo-pagans and other occultist believers can come from any religious or non-religious background, although they most commonly come from Christian households, much to the chagrin of local church leaders, many of whom often conflate or regard any form of neo-paganism with Satanism or devil worship. Regardless, it's quite common for many modern pagans to identify as some denomination of Christian as well, or incorporate elements of Christianity into their practice, or vice versa, practicing Christianity with paganistic elements, although many aspects of modern Christianity already have ancient pagan origins, seen in many Christian holidays such as Christmas, 
Easter, or Halloween, the latter of which actually has no biblical origin whatsoever and was originally purely a Celtic pagan holiday before being rebranded as All Saints or All Hallows Day by Irish Catholic immigrants arriving in the United States. Now, it is quite clear that among European ethno-religious neo-pagans, they hold strong beliefs regarding tradition and ancestral veneration, which tends in many, though not all, to have a strong conservative lean without a doubt. However, among other non-ethno-religious designations, such as Wiccans, Druids, Satanists, or general occultists, it's actually been found that they have a strong left lean, at least in the United States, where Pew Research claims that over 40% lean Democrat as opposed to only 20% Republican. In addition, it's been found that practitioners of modern European neo-paganism are overwhelmingly male, while the latter group of occultists are overwhelmingly female, which further explains the political persuasions of these different groups, with the European neo-pagans favoring tradition, order, and stability, with other occultists showing strong support for progressive values and inclusion. And according to unofficial estimates, the vast majority of the American neo-pagan community, not including shamanism, Wiccans, or Satanists, is 97% European in origin, which is unsurprising seeing how European neo-pagan religions are very heavily tied with their ancestral homeland, and when including Wiccans, Satanists, and other non-ethno-religious pagan designations, Europeans are still well overrepresented at over 88%, but not quite as heavily. Judging from the responses I received from my recent channel census and the 2017 channel census, around 40% of self-described European neo-pagans identify as ethnic nationalists, while 20% straight up identify as national socialist, which is an order of magnitude three to four times greater than the general public, and this can be traced back to pagan and occultist beliefs held by and practiced by many high-ranking officials in the Nazi party in the 30s and 40s, although it would be beyond slanderous to associate this affiliation with the entirety of the European neo-pagan community. And although these numbers may not be perfect because it was an internet survey, it's still very clear that neo-pagans skew heavily towards the right, politically speaking, being the only religious group in my survey where a majority of adherents were either right or hard right wing, although interestingly there was a slight cluster towards the hard left as well, leaving quite the perplexing inverse bell curve. Now, I have seen a couple sources claiming that among European neo-pagans in the world, a majority describe themselves as left-leaning, and only a tiny minority, 1%, are far-right, which personally I find incredibly difficult to believe, as unless my channel just so happens to attract 100% of the far-right pagan community, which, eh, you'd be the judge of that, the methodology was flawed. Although only 2-3% to of my audience strictly identifies as either pagan, Wiccan, or Satanist, the number who claimed some affiliation with these occult movements as a secondary religion is easily double this amount at over 5%, as many identify as both atheist and Satanist, or Protestant and Odinist, and the largest occultist designations were Norse, German, and Slavic paganism, all at under 1% each, although again, when including those who identify with these groups as a secondary religion, religion, these percentages greatly increase. Among Europeans and areas with a high European diaspora worldwide, the number of neo-pagans and occultists is well into the millions, with estimates wildly, and I do mean wildly, varying, with a high estimate of perhaps 7 million, including 2 million in both the Americas and Eastern Europe. To give a bit of context, this is still only 0.3% of the population in the Western world, but is still around the same number of Buddhists, and this would place neo-paganism in the top 10 religions practiced in the West, although keep in mind this is a multitude of different traditions, beliefs, and identities rolled up into one, so it is a bit disingenuous to simply classify this diverse bunch under the loose umbrella term of neo-pagan. In Europe, although estimates vary extremely, we can get a general estimate for most ethnic groups in the continent. In Eastern Europe, Russians have the largest number and percentage of occultists, especially in the European half and in Russian diaspora groups in the Baltic and elsewhere, while in Western Europe, by far the largest percentage of occultists is in Iceland, up to 2% of the population, with smaller numbers in the rest of Scandinavia, the UK, and Germany. In the overseas European diaspora, there are large numbers in America, South Africa, and elsewhere in the Anglosphere, as well as there even being a small Roman pagan revivalist community in Latin America. 
Even so, the largest occultist communities in the United States are in the northern and northeast regions of the country, such as Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Minnesota, Maryland, and other areas of New England, which have generally established themselves as much more secular than the so-called Bible Belt in the South. Keep in mind, although not all of these are necessarily classified as neo-pagan groups, the Caucasian and Euro regions have the highest proportion of pagans in or around Europe, although being on the fringes of the continent, most of these groups do not identify with, nor do they fall into the same patterns as the European neo-pagans, meaning they generally don't have some of the same nationalist or traditionalist views. Perhaps even more fascinating, though, is the fact that there has also been a revival of many other religious beliefs around the world, such as the worship of the ancient Egyptian gods known as Kemetism, or of the Sumerian or Mesopotamian gods known as Muism, the latter of which has actually become quite popular in Iceland. And although further research is certainly needed on this subject and the vast and complex nuances surrounding it, the neo-pagan or occultist community is definitely starting to take shape in the western world, somewhat filling in the hole left in our so-called post-religion society, even if it is very often slandered, misunderstood, and mischaracterized. So be sure to let me know your thoughts on the neo-pagans and occultists around the world, and for today's poll, let me know which one of these groups piques your interest the most. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a fine Christmas. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next year.